I still can't believe it exists. It's real. It's a material item of Tom Sawyer on the NES or the Famicom. Squire's Tom Sawyer. It's a bizarre RPG for sure. For sure. For sure. Wow, I just can't believe this thing exists. Um, I did a Let's Play this if you want to see footage. Um, there's only one other guy who ever did some Let's Play videos of it, and he only has a few of them. He never, like, did a 100% guide of it. But, um, <clears throat> what to say? Um, to be honest, if it wasn't for the language barrier, I'd say this is probably an uh, excellent RPG to start with for a new person, newbie, a noob. A new come on to the RPGs. Because it has no equipment management, and there's no any, like, real deep customization. But, um, interesting, there is strategy that I don't very well use in my actual Let's Play, mainly because of the language value. See, there are several items that you can get. Some of them do different things. Like, one item I found out before I, led, uh, before I finished my Let's Play was there's a quit NPC who does a quiz show. You can get, like, an item that's like the, um, the, uh, Wonderstone thing in, uh, Dragon Quest III where you can use it and it heals everyone's stuff. Um, there's a multitude of items that have different effects on monsters and that. So it's a, it's a very, it has strategy, but because of the language barrier for English person, uh, English, <laughs> an English person, it would be a lot more difficult because of the language barrier. Um, I had to do a lot of research to actually understand even a few of the items, and still a lot of them are a big mystery. Um, Basically, if you want to know how the game works, though, if you ever played most of the Saga games, um, that's a lot how the growth of your characters work. Um, there's no leveling up or anything. You just beat the living crap out of stuff, and when you go west, sleep, or eat bread or something that restores health, um, you'll have all your new stats that you've gained. So, um, there's no real, like, um, customization stats or anything. You just naturally gain them as you fight things. That suppose we get more for the harder monsters and less for the weaker monsters. But uh, a little debatable though. Now, um, there's a lot of characters in this game and they all have different maxed values on all the stats, which would be your HP, your attack, your defense, and your quick points, which is basically your agility. Now, um, to be honest, a lot of characters seem kind of useless to me, but, again, to be fair, that might also, again, be interfered by the language barrier. Many of the characters have special abilities, which certain ones still remain a mystery to English people, so, um, be honest, there might be particular special things for certain characters in the game, so, but, the, again, the language barrier really prevents being really strategic and you have to go more bronze unless you're willing to do a lot of vested time in figuring out all the items and that. Um, I did find a particular uh, Japanese site uh, translate in Google Translate to be very useful in understanding uh, some of the items in that better than the uh, Game FAQs guide since um, most of the items they didn't understand what they were and I've had better luck on uh, two different Japanese sites. Um, they, they're a bit iffy as because, you know, it's being directly translated, so some sentences and such are kind of broken. Like, uh, I number one said, like, um, so I, such item taken to so-and-so person when you give it to them for item, so it doesn't translate in perfect English, so, but, um, the game also has very interesting, uh, world... Um, basically, if you could imagine how Friday the 13th, where you could go up and down paths and sideways, mixed with the mazy construction of Simon's Quest, Castlevania 2 Simon's Quest, kind of combine, like, 
the large world of Simon's Quest, but give it the kind of up and down, sideways scrolling environment of Friday the 13th on the NES, and you kind of have how the world and Tom Sawyer works here, and it works all right. Um, random battles are just random, and um, you know you just move around different environments, you know towns and forests and such, and so on areas you can get in the fights and such. Um, it's also important to note, too, is, um, this feature is what, uh, I like to refer to as the old don't smash A button trick. Um, basically what I mean is, it's one of those games where if you, like, have everyone attack the same thing, that thing dies, and, um, you know, somebody's still attacking it, it's not gonna go to the next enemy, they're gonna still attack the thin air. So, um... It features that kind of combat, so you, if you're fighting a large group of enemies, you do want to try and not waste everyone's uh, taunts. You can have up to four characters in your party. And, um, be honest, uh, I, when it comes to stats, there's not a lot of variety. Most of the characters are way left in the dust, so unless they have, like, really special uses, I can't really imagine how many of the other characters are too useful. Um, the story in the game is kind of hard to talk about because, again, there's that language barrier. But I did look through several Japanese review sites and stuff to kind of get an idea a little bit. Basically, one of the towns had their bells stolen. And Tom Sawyer and his friends were trying to look for treasure. And along the way, there's some weird... Well, to be honest, this was kind of iffy, and I'm not 100% on this, but there's supposedly like a subplot where some of the random shit you're fighting is like some kind of weird dream world, which is why after the labyrinth, um, all the monsters supposedly vanish. I went there in one review, and I'm not 100% sure if that's accurate or not. But basically, you'll end up finding the bell, and you'll have to fight the villain for the book, who, uh, again... As I mentioned in my Let's Play, if I remember correctly, they rolled a boulder in front of the cave and let him basically die of starvation. But in this, you actually go into the cave, find the bell, and you have to hand him his ass if you want to get out of the cave with the bell. So the story ain't really complicated. The battle system ain't really complicated. And it's a pretty simplistic game. It's just really for non-Japanese people, if you can't speak or read Japanese, you're just going, it's basically comes down to the concept of figuring out where to go, who to talk to, and what to do exactly. And, um, there was information out there to get you from point A to point B, so it's not completely, uh, broken to that. Um, the kind of, how should I say, the, um, the warning call for the game, um, I don't find it, it as steep as Mother 1 was, like at the end. And I think that's a good comparison, because um, they're both on the NES. At the end of Mother 1, the end of the game was kind of a big spike in difficulty in that. I don't think this game spikes as much, um, mainly because originally I thought it was, but because um, I was following solely the game FAQ's guide, which there was only one, but I found out that um, he, he was kind of confused about one part, and he actually kind of went through the midway point backwards. And I found out what you're supposed to do, and I went through it well. the difficulty didn't spike it so wildly. So, um, overall, it's an interesting, bizarre game, but actually I kind of enjoyed it. It's not very long. It's a nice short game to pick up, and that's just all about knowing where to go when you can't understand the game. And there is a slightly partial translated ROM of the game, supposedly, but uh, it's only ever so slightly, so you're not going to really be handed through it kind of like Romancing Saga 2's translation. Uh, it's really just very minimal. But like I said, I played on the actual cartridge, so I didn't have any of that when I did my Let's Play. But I did look at a video, so it, it did help a little in understanding some of the main menu and items a little quicker. 
Um, but uh, overall, it's a very interesting game. I would check it out if you, for some reason, had an opportunity to. But uh, it's probably not for everyone, really. It's very simplistic, and, you know, it's in Japanese. So I would recommend it if you're... If you have experience playing Japanese RPGs, I don't think it would be too difficult for you to figure it out if you have experience. Um, if you have never played a Japanese RPG before, um, probably not the best thing, because being an old game, it's all, all the items on text that, like, one of the conveniences of modern RPGs is, like, a lot of item icons and such. Like, I can't tell you how much easier Mother 3 was to play in Japanese because of all the item icons, which basically almost like 95% of the items you could understand what the fuck they were and the odds are of what it would do. So, um, if you're not experienced with Japanese RPGs, probably not the best thing to start with. But, uh, I did enjoy it. If you're looking for something incredibly bizarre, I would check out Squire's Tom Sawyer for the Famicom NES. And good luck getting a Cavoldo to play it on your NES if you're playing the real thing. Also, this wasn't actually very expensive if you're interested in the actual cartridge. So anyway, if you have any uh, questions or anything you would like to know about Tom Sawyer, um, you're welcome to add and... Don't ever play the Avengers of Tom Sawyer on the American NES. That game's atrocious. Don't care what you think. Till next time.